1994, comic book creator Todd McFarlane, famed for his work on Spider-Man and the creation of Spawn, took the toy industry by storm by introducing a line of action figures aimed directly at adult collectors. Yes, these were grown-up toys for grown-up boys. So shut up, mom, and ugh, please not before you come in my room, because action figures aren't the only thing I'm playing with in here. Not my words, mind you, but the words of 90s teenagers the world over, as they assembled carefully curated collections of creepy creatures and muscle-bound macho men. If you haven't heard the word on the street, hashtag Spawntember is a month-long spawn extravaganza, created by my good friend and fellow YouTuber Diego Rivera. Everybody's talking about it, even the Todd father himself. So in honour of hashtag Spawntember, I thought it would be fun to revisit those halcyon days of gory, filthy, sordid little playthings. Now just a heads up, this video features some pretty gnarly and messed up toys. There's lots of realistically sculpted and painted gore and freaky monsters, so if you're not into that kind of thing, I totally understand if you want to dip on this video. And I just want to point out that this video is just for fun. I'm not some pearl-clutching Puritan, None of these toys offend me or anything like that. In fact, I think most of them are rad as hell. But with all of the disclaimers and content warnings out of the way, hey heroes, I'm Josh from Panos Pixels, and here are 10 McFarlane Toys action figures that will leave you asking the question, what the f- Number 10. By 1997, the Spawn toy line had been running for a few years, and had already produced multiple versions of the comic's admittedly limited cast of characters. So what do you do when you're nine waves in and running out of designs for figures? Well, if the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles taught us anything with the Space Cadet Raphael and sewer surfing Michelangelo, you just slap a novelty theme on there and release the same characters all over again. And thus, Manga Spawn was born. All the figures from this series are neat designs that fuse futuristic robot parts with the more familiar demonic iconography of Spawn. But the clear standout of the series, at least in terms of pure what the f***ery, is Manga Clown. With the clown's festering flesh melting off his bloated body and wrapping around his mechanical spider legs like sinewy spaghetti, I am utterly revolted by this action figure. But in like, a cool way? Number 9 in at number 9 on the list, we have The Conqueror from 1996's Total Chaos series. And I'm including this one not because it's gratuitously gruesome, but because it simply shouldn't exist. Well, okay, it's not that it shouldn't exist, but it very nearly didn't, and wouldn't have if not for some toy-making ingenuity. Spinning off from the success of the Spawn toy line, Total Chaos featured entirely original characters and designs not based off an existing property. The series was an opportunity for McFarlane's in-house sculptors to go hog-wild, with creepy cybernetic brutes and big freaking rhinos with guns. But in a weird way, the character with the most interesting origin wasn't designed for the series at all. The story goes that after a production error with one of the other figures in the line, McFarlane was left with a spot to fill, and thanks to some quick <clears throat> recycling, produced the Conqueror. Combining a recoloured medieval spawn body with an unmasked spawn head cast in translucent green plastic, the result is surprisingly cool looking. Throw a tunic on there and some ridiculously oversized weapons, and you would never guess that this was cobbled together from reused parts. Nowadays, this sort of thing would be a store-exclusive variant that would immediately be scooped up and sold on eBay by scalpers, but back then it was a testament to Todd McFarlane's uncanny ability to just keep churning out endless cool shit. Number eight. If you couldn't tell from reading literally any of his comic book work, Todd McFarlane loves designing great big creepy creatures, and in the late 1990s launched a toy line called McFarlane's Monsters. This was the artist's chance to design his own distinctive distortions of classic horror and fantasy figures, such as Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman. They're honestly super cool looking and becoming increasingly hard to come by in my experience. But I digress. Series 2 was subtitled The Twisted Land of Oz, and featured sadistic spins on the family favourite Wizard of Oz. Of the entire assortment, I have to give the prize for most likely to outrage a parent to the Dorothy with Munchkins figure, which, as the name suggests, depicts the story's protagonist and the diminutive denizens of Oz. And let me tell you, Judy Garland she ain't. Bound, blindfolded, and scantily clad, Dorothy is depicted as a kind of steampunk goth who is about to be branded by two bondage gear munchkins. And that is a combination of words I never want to hear come out of my mouth ever again. Number seven. 1997 brought us Spawn the Motion Picture, and old Toddy Mac didn't hesitate to produce a line of toys based on the even grittier, even darker, somehow even more grotesque depiction of Spawn on the big screen. McFarlane even bagged himself some screen time, with a Stan Lee style cameo in the movie, 
and of course that meant he got his very own action figure. Released in 1998 as a Toy Fair exclusive, the 3 inch Todd the Bum figure depicts the Todd father in character as one of the residents of Spawn's Alley. There's really not much more I can say about this one. I can't believe it exists, but I love that it does. And speaking of things that I love, have I told you recently how much I love this video's sponsor, Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people like you. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and most importantly, get inspired. There are literally thousands of classes on there from illustration, graphic design, animation, video editing, photography, music, and so much more. Recently, I've been getting really into toy and action figure photography because I'm a massive dweeb apparently, but the truth is I'm a very amateur photographer. So I just went straight to Skillshare and I brushed up on the fundamentals of DSLR photography with Justin Bridges. This crash course gives you everything you need to know about all that confusing stuff like shutter speed, aperture and ISO, so that you can take the stunning professional photos you've always dreamed of. What I really love about Skillshare is the combination of video lessons, which are great for visual learners like me, plus the class projects that encourage you to get creative and put your new skills into practice. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Sounds good, right? Well, the good news is the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So whether you're a beginner, a pro, a dabbler, or a master, Skillshare has the tools you need to explore your creativity. Thanks, on with the show. Number six. Ah, the late 1990s. Truly a golden age of childhood trauma. If it wasn't the rented VHS tape of Halloween H2O that my older sister made me watch, or the copy of Silent Hill that my older sister made me play, Damn, being the younger sibling really messed me up. It may well have been staying up till 9pm on a Monday night to watch The X-Files. And guess what? There were X-Files toys, because of course there were. In 1998, McFarlane Toys produced a line of toys based on the popular sci-fi television series. And alongside show staples like Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, certain figures came packaged with a victim in body bag and gurney. Inside the cloth goods body bag, nice touch by the way, collectors were treated to a fully sculpted and detailed alien infected corpse. The age range on this figure was five and up. Like, enough said. <laughs> Number five. Returning once again to the McFarlane's Monsters line, Series 4 was sold under the subheading Twisted Fairy Tales, which, as you can probably guess, featured reimaginings of classic fairy tales in Todd McFarlane's trademark style. All the figures in this assortment are unsurprisingly horrifying, but the clear standout is Humpty Dumpty. Like the previous entry, Manga Clown, this one makes the list because of the visceral reaction I have whenever I see it, i.e. it makes me want to bleach my eyeballs. McFarlane's Humpty Dumpty isn't some cute little Eggman in a frock coat and pantaloons. <laughs> no, he's just a mound of rotting, maggot-infested flesh, looking like something from James Gunn's Slither. I do love that he still has his little propeller hat though. It's the paintwork on this one for me, with the greys and purples, yellows and blacks in the skin tones, really selling the effect of rotting flap. Oof, good grief, let's move on before I lose my lunch. Number four. <laughs> Sorry. Right, now this may be an unpopular opinion by 2021 standards, but I still really love the Austin Powers series. Anybody who thinks the humour in these movies doesn't hold up need only watch this clip to be convinced otherwise. A lot's happened since you were frozen. The Cold War's over. Well, finally those capitalist pigs will pay for their crimes, eh? Hey, comrades, hey! Austin, we won. Oh, groovy, smashing, yay capitalism! <laughs> when McFarlane Toys produced a line of action figures based on the hit comedy in 1999, they found themselves at the centre of a not so shagadelic scandal. Specifically, it was the Austin Danger Powers figure, which represents the swinging 60s super spy stripped down to his skivvies that provoked parental outrage. Atlanta Mother wants risque Austin Powers doll out of Toy Store, read one newspaper headline, and the article goes on to detail how the woman's 11 year old son asked her the meaning of the word horny after reading the sentence, Do I make you horny? Do I? on the toy's packaging. Ouch, baby. Very ouch. Even without the controversy surrounding Austin's off colour catchphrases, there's something just inherently creepy about this figure. The intricate sculpted detail of McFarlane toys of this era, with washes of black paint, are perfectly suited to, say, a disfigured demon from the fiery pits of hell, but when applied to a realistic rendering of Mike Myers' naked form, 
I just... who is this for exactly? And don't even get me started on the realistic chest hair. Just the thought of how this feels to touch makes me sick in my mouth a little bit. Number three. I'm cheating slightly with this entry by not limiting my selection to a single figure, but rather an entire toy line. And that is Clive Barker's Tortured Souls from 2001. Honestly, pick any of these figures and question how the toy industry went from Barbie and He-Man and Ken of Star Wars to this. Employing Clive Baker's classic cocktail of bondage, mutilation, and lots and lots of skin hooks, each figure came packaged with a 32-page novelette by the legendary horror writer. Barker himself said about the series, These figures represent the creature that both obsesses you and repulses you simultaneously. These are the figures you put in a dark place in your house, probably with some votive candles, to haunt a corner in your home. I mean, it should really come as no surprise that the twisted mind behind 1987's Hellraiser and a whole host of other f***ed up literary and artistic works should turn out such nauseating toys. But man, imagine being nine-year-old me seeing these in Toys R Us for the first time. Christ, is it any wonder that this is what I do for a living now? If I did have to pick a favourite, which is like asking me to pick my favourite venereal disease, I'd have to go with the McFarlane Toys Collector's Club exclusive body bag, which depicts a wrinkled old decaying corpse that has been split asunder and hollowed out like a Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> this video is so getting demonetized, isn't it? Number two. After proving that toys based on comics such as Spawn, Youngblood, and Wetworks could be a hit with adult collectors, Todd McFarlane set out to plasticize one of the hottest creator-owned comic books of the 1990s, with toys based on Frank Miller's Sin City. Ah, Frank Miller and McFarlane Toys, a match made in controversy heaven. And that would certainly end up to be true, with a figure of Sin City's gritty anti-hero Marv in a battery-powered, light-up, vibrating electric chair. Released in 1999, Death Row Marv garnered widespread media attention and drew a lot of criticism from parents for its macabre action feature. As the figure's packaging boasts, watch Marv convulse as the switch is thrown, then hear him say, that's the best you can do, you pansies, and see his eyes glow red as he fries. Putting that poor sentence structure aside, the figure became a lightning rod for controversy at a time when tensions over the use of capital punishment in the US were at an all-time high. Hey, but there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Number one. Now ask yourselves, what toy collection is complete without a hyper-realistic figure of a child killer's naked corpse? Billy Kincaid is his name, and luring children into an ice cream van before chopping them into little pieces is his sick game. That is until Spawn issue 5, in which our necroplasmic protagonist butchers Kincaid with an ice cream scoop, popsicle sticks, and leaves his bloody body hanging in chains, with a note reading, boys screamed and girls screamed, so I made him scream and scream and scream. And it's on that infamous final page that this action figure released in 2004 is based. Now, I'm not saying those original Spawn comics are all rainbows and sunshine, but there's something about seeing this scene rendered in 3D that begs the question, what the actual f was Todd McFarlane thinking? Thank you for watching this video. If you love comic books, video games, cartoons and toys, well, you've just found your new favourite YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Panels to Pixels to see more stuff like this. Leave a like, drop me a comment, follow me on Twitter at Panels to Pixels. Any little thing like that you can do to support the channel and to let YouTube know that my videos are worth showing to other people, I truly appreciate it. As always, heroes, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.